Logan the Layman Critic here. Today we review the second theatrical film in the Legend of the True Savior series, Fist of the North Star, Chapter of Fierce Fight. It's from 2007 and is directed by Toshiki Hirano. Let's talk movies. The last Nanto general seeks out Kenshiro as an ally in stopping Rao. But when a person from the brother's past is revealed to be alive and well, Rao ushers his army into one final conflict with Kenshiro. I'm being a little careful with my plot description so as not to spoil the story. There's obviously more going on than what I'm talking about here. That said, there will be some spoiling here and there, so turn back if you want to go into the movie fresh. Uh, Chapter of Fierce Fight does well to build off the preceding two entries with regards to the inevitable conflict between Kenshiro and Rao. Their destinies are intertwined. They both were in love with the same woman and both sought the place of success for the Hokuto Shinken fighting style. One wants peace through conquering and the other wants peace by leading from example. The story seems to suggest that it's written in the stars for them to fight. And I love the whole spiritual, metaphysical aspects of the story. It's um, more or less a sort of hero myth in the Buddhist mold, yet the post-apocalyptic setting seems uh, suggestive of the Book of Revelation. Um, you've got Rao as a sort of antichrist figure who holds the most power over civilization. You know, he wants to crush any opposition and shape the world as he sees fit. And he views himself as the one that is the true success successor of Hokuto Shinken. Then you have these pockets of people that are resisting, that have to come together to rally behind Kenshiro, the legitimate successor to Hokuto Shinken, the true savior. <laughs> I don't know if the parallels were intentional. Uh, but I'm not sure it matters. Um, Joseph Campbell did a lot of work in comparative mythology, and C.S. Lewis uh, claimed myths as a foggy window to see into biblical truths. I mean, you have these differing approaches that lead to a similar cl conclusion, and I find that fascinating. Um, Rao's character gets some more development. Um, his frustration with being unable to meet Kenshiro on equal footing, despite believing in his own superiority as a as a fighter, leads him to a roadblock. And in order for him to unlock the strength that Kenshiro uh, wields, he must go against his own nature. Rao must open himself up to emotions, you know, to sadness, to gentleness. The very things that he hardened his heart against because he believed them to be weaknesses. And he's haunted by the ghost of his master and, and Toki, who affirm this. So, Rao takes extreme measures to overcome his limitations. He holds a bunch of children hostage to provoke an old enemy, to unleash his darker side and draw out fear that Rao had experienced in their previous encounter. And Rao is even prepared to kill someone close to him in the hopes that it will <laughs> make him sad. Um, he's that messed up of a person. And when he finally thinks he has what he needs, he engages Kenshiro one final time. And I'm not going to spoil the outcome here. Um, not that I expect you to not know what happens, obviously. Um, Kenshiro wins. Both in the fight and in saving Rao's spirit. Kenshiro lives up to the name of True Savior when he's able to bring redemption to his worst enemy someone with the hardest of hearts, and it's very satisfying. I mean, certainly there's plenty of things going on in the film leading up to the fight, but this is the crux of the story. With the way things end, um, with the way things end, I, I don't really know where the story could go and still be interesting. It feels very complete here, but I guess we'll find out next review, right? <laughs> so until next time, ladies and gentlemen, fellows. Take care.